So now it's my pleasure to introduce this morning's speakers, the Chairman of the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, Richard Flora, and Chairman of the Roanoke County School Board, Fuzzy Minix. Chairman Flora was first elected in 1971 and served on the Roanoke County, uh, uh, County Board of Supervisors from 72 to 75, and he returned to represent the Hollins Magisterial District in 2002 and won the re-election uh, in 2005 and 2009. He previously served as Chairman of the Board of Supervisors in 2004 and 2008. And as many of you know, Chairman Flora has enjoyed a long career in public service. He retired as Director of Operations for Roanoke County Schools in the spring of 2006 and currently serves as the Craig County Administrator. In addition, Chairman Flora currently serves on the Roanoke County Audit Committee, the Roanoke Valley Allegheny Regional Commission, the School, School Construction Committee, the Total Action Against Poverty Board of Directors and the Virginia Association for Counties Board of Directors. Chairman Flora attended William Byrd High School and holds a BA in Political Science from Roanoke College. Our second speaker, Chairman H. Odell Fuzzy Minix, was elected to the Roanoke County School Board in 2008. And prior to his service on the school board, Mr. Minnick served three terms as member of the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, representing the Case Spring Magisterial District from 1992 to 2003. He served as chairman of the board in 93, 95, and 01. So I am now pleased to welcome Richard Floor, chairman of the Roanoke County Board of Supervisors, to deliver the 2012 State of the County Address. Chairman Floor, if you would take the podium, please. I had to change glasses. I bought those glasses and they're just a little too strong to get a distance like this, so I put the ones on I've been wearing for about 15 years. Good morning and, and welcome to every one of you for being here. Uh, as I have moved through the uh, group this morning and, and looked around, uh, it's become pretty obvious that the people that are here are those who make a difference in this valley. You're the ones that make things happen, and I want to thank you for being here. I also want to thank the Chamber of Commerce for making this possible. Uh, it's a great undertaking. Uh, it's uh, quite an event, and, and we, we had a beautiful day today. I don't know how many of you got to see the sunrise, but uh, it, 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 was, it was nice. There are a couple of people that, that I want to introduce that are here, as I, those of you who might have been here in 2008 that, uh, uh, that heard me speak, both of my children work in the public sector. So one of them teaches school, and she's in the classroom right now teaching kindergarten. My son is a captain running the city fire department, and of course, naturally, he's on duty today. But I have a couple of people here that are, that are really important to me. Um, Laverne, who is my, my best friend and my traveling companion and my partner, and, and who was here four years ago. Uh, delighted to have her here, too. And my daughter's husband of almost two and a half months now, uh, Brian Garber, who works for Norfolk Southern, has a little bit more flexibility in his job, uh, was able to join us and delighted to have him here. As I was getting ready this morning, I, I, something passed through my mind, it was just a little story here. Two, two children, uh, a son who's a captain and a professional firefighter, my daughter married a volunteer firefighter from Cave Spring. Now, Back in the day when I was young, I belonged to Hollis Fire and Rescue myself, so I, I, I know a little bit about volunteering in those agencies. But we had the option of either being in the rescue squad or the fire department, so I opted to rescue squad because I can deal with broken bones and accidents and heart attacks. But frankly, walking into a burning building never seemed like a very good idea to me. But I, I, I am pleased and delighted that there are people who are willing to do it. God bless both of them. Today we're going to talk a little bit about taking risks and courage and, and what it really does mean to, you, to the communities. You might be surprised to hear that I consider this an exemplary year in the history of Roanoke County government. Not because of the things that we did, but because of the few things that we did not do. 
In the fourth year of the Great Recession, as we contend with lower revenues, higher costs of doing business, increased demands for service, increased demands by the state, the state of Virginia who is kind of raiding our coffers to balance their own budget. In all of these things, we did not raise taxes, we did not lay off people, and we did not compromise the level and standard of services that we provide our citizens. We ended another year in good financial health thanks to the great long-term planning, vigilance, and tight belting by our budget team, our department directors and staff. In today's challenges, challenging economic climate, that alone makes Roanoke County a success story. When you add to that our excellent schools, our safe neighborhoods, first-class recreational amenities, and high quality of life, it's clear that we've achieved something truly special here in Roanoke County. It is simply one of the country's best places to live, work, and raise a family. And let me add that we can extend that to the entire Roanoke Valley. However, these exceptional achievements did not happen by accident. They are the result of a long history of courageous and forward-thinking leadership, the courage to take risks, embrace change, face opposition, propose new ideas, and find common ground on controversial issues. We owe much of our success today to courageous decisions that were set in motion years, if not decades ago. At the time, many of these bold moves were met with controversy and opposition. But today, we can point to them as choices that helped guide our county through hard times and toward a bright future. For example, Spring Hollow Reservoir. It was a huge risk that turned out to be one of the best things that ever happened to this valley. Even though we had reports indicating the entire valley was on the verge of running out of water, building it was still emotionally charged and highly controversial. Now, no one can argue about the dividends it has paid to the public. As we endured severe drought conditions in the late 1990s, we were able to help our neighbors by providing water for the city of Roanoke which was in a desperate situation. That led to the creation of the Western Virginia Water Authority in 2004. Today, we all have clean, reliable water sources that provide over 23 million gallons of treated water a day for more than 155,000 people. Smith Gap Landfill is another example. When the board undertook the project in the early 90s, it was met with plenty of opposition. No one wanted a landfill in their neighborhood. But working with the Citizens Advisory Committee, we found common ground and created an innovative and cost-effective long-term solution. Today, the Landfill and Roanoke Resource Authority stand as a statewide model of efficiency and regional cooperation. In addition, the Board of Supervisors took flat for the fee for services for fire and rescue in 2001. This was a new and untested concept in Roanoke County, but over the last 10 years implementing it, we've been able to do the following. Meet the demand of a call volume that has more than doubled. Offset a loss of volunteers by hiring 60 paid paramedic firefighters. Improved response times. Responded to almost 100% of calls with a qualified paramedic instead of the previously 17%. And provided advanced life support staff 24 days, 24 hours a day, seven days a week for the entire county. I'll add that more than 90% of rescue transports are paid by people's health insurance, and those who can't afford are not required to pay. Another one is the Western, uh, Virgin the Western uh, Virginia Regional Jail. It was, it was a very controversial issue, if you were, many of you will recall. It's a shining example of how, though, regional cooperation has enabled us to pool our resources, save money, and keep citizens safe by entering into a partnership with Franklin County, Montgomery County, Salem. We solved common problems of overcrowding, potential lawsuits, expense of transporting and housing inmates at other localities, and having to reduce sentencing to alleviate that overcrowding. Today, few would argue that this was a bad idea. Approximately eight years ago, the Board of Supervisors and the school board 
took the bold step of partnering to fund each other's future needs using a shared capital formula. Each year, we set aside a dedicated amount to support future capital initiatives. This award-winning plan, coupled with the county's health, healthy res reserves and strong fiscal policy, has allowed the county and schools to move ahead with much needed projects. Without tax increases, additional fees, or politics entering the picture. Well, maybe not so much the politics, but anyway, you get the picture. As a result of this program, we have been able to fund multiple school renovations and construction projects across the entire county. The county has also reaped a benefit by continuing with projects that other localities may have delayed due to the depressed economic climate. Those include the new public safety center, new fire and rescue station on Hershberger Road, our state-of-the-art fleet service center, the recreation center that you are seated in right now, the upgrade of our emergency radio system, and the new South County Library. And speaking of the South County Library, clearly that project is an example of the Field of Dreams principle. The county built it and they came. Sure, we encountered plenty of criticism for li a library because it was so dramatically different from any other library in this valley. It has won, though, national and state and local acclaims. During the past year, it's won accolades from Virginia Library Directors Association, the American Library's Design Showcase, Roanoke Magazine, and the Roanoke Times. I want to share some numbers with you that is evidence of the value that our citizens put on, on the South County Library. In the first nine months of operation, more than 3,700 new library cards have been issued. Attendance at community programs has tripled. The number of items checked out has increased 20 percent, and volunteer hours have increased 23 percent. As we move ahead to, to build new libraries in Glenver and in Vinton, we have a wonderful model to guide us in, in creating more community-based centers for lifelong learning. As an update, the Glenver Library is well underway, and we anticipate having a groundbreaking, a ribbon-cutting, not a groundbreaking, a ribbon-cutting in the spring of this next year. And the Vinton Library is on the horizon with the purchase of a great downtown location in Vinton in partnership with our friends in the town of Vinton. And let me add that the town of Vinton ponied up money to purchase the property, and they have no ownership in it. And that's what you call faith. The projects I've highlighted this morning are just a few examples of the courageous long-term decisions that have enabled our county to be strong today and for the future. But as government, business, community, and school leaders, we all know that we can't rest on our laurels. There are always decisions to be made, some sooner than later, some easier than others. When you consider the projects and initiatives just mentioned, you'll note a common thread throughout, and that's regional partnership and collaboration. In the weeks and months ahead, Roanoke County will be looking at the cost and safety benefits of two potential partnerships with the city of Roanoke. One involving merging our 911 communications center, just as we did with the town of Venton. We will also be considering a partnership to operate a criminal justice training academy. Regional cooperation has allowed local governments, not just us, but statewide, to operate more fluidly and efficiently during lean economic times. Given the forecast, which shows that our economy is unlikely to fully rebound to its 2008 prosperity anytime soon. I believe that regional partnerships such as these will be part of the way forward. By working together as a region, we can be good stewards of our taxpayers' dollars, balance our budget, and continue to provide the services and quality of life that makes Roanoke Valley attractive to citizens and prospective employers. In the years ahead, we also face complex problems like costly storm water mandates, 
and have the potential to impact, that has the potential to impact our business community directly to the bottom line. The possible return of secondary road construction and maintenance by the state to localities. This is, this is something that's been on the General Assembly's agenda now for a couple years. It's going to cost Roanoke County millions of dollars to do that. And, of course, we all understand the impacts of the growing federal deficit. Such challenges will force our county to make tough decisions that may redefine who we are. We will have to continue to strive to balance the budget while investing in our community's quality of life and future. Our financial well-being as a county is the biggest and most important piece of that equation. Since the economy first tanked in 2008, Roanoke County, like all other local governments, has been in survival mode. In this environment, only the strong survive, and you can rest assured that Roanoke County stands strong. Once again, we ended the fiscal year in the black. Roanoke County employees have come through year after year to balance the budget, reduce expenses, meet growing service demands, and doing more with less. We again achieved one of the highest possible investment grade credit ratings from all of the major credit rating agencies. This too is a significant achievement for any local government in today's economy. Next year, however, is likely to be one of the toughest we've faced in years in terms of a budget. Costs are going to, costs to provide services are going up, but the money that's coming in is not keeping pace. We will need to make tough decisions and seek feedback from the community about what programs and services we can afford and maintain and what we may have to cut. And Roanoke County has already started that process. Our, our, uh, our finance department and our budget department is already working on a formula to start working with their, every department to find out what's important and what's not important because very likely something's going to have to go next year. The board remains committed to keeping real estate tax rates where they are, supporting our schools and public safety, maintaining core services for citizens and investing in projects that will improve our community and make us competitive in the eyes of prospective businesses. In this economically challenging fiscal year, our Economic Development Department has continued to make progress. It announced four new business locations and seven expansions during the year with a total investment of nearly $17 million and the creation of more than 340 jobs. Among those companies that deserve a big round of applause are Coca-Cola, Novozyme Bi Biologicals, and Delta Dental. And we thank you for continuing to invest in the community, bringing much needed employment opportunities. Word is getting out that Roanoke County is an excellent place to live and work, and as I said, this valley is an excellent place to live and work. We're seeing more inquiries and from prospective employers, in fact, 35% more than last year. This increase to activity matters because it drives results and it creates new opportunities for growth. And speaking of growth, we're continuing to fo focus on primary commercial corridors, laying groundwork for future economic development opportunities. We have secured grant funding to enhance and revitalize Plantation Road in Hollins area, continued with significant infrastructure improvements along 460 in the Glenver area, and supported the town of Benton in securing a grant to revitalize the downtown business district. These improvements represent significant new investment in economic development infrastructure, which will make these key corridors more vibrant and convenient for business, customers, residents, and commuters. Our strength as a county comes from the relationships we've developed with our existing businesses. It is their success and stability that are vital to maintaining a healthy economy, and we are committed to assisting them in their continued growth. To that end, I would like to congratulate Southern States Cooperative, Dave Jones and his team, on being named the best feed mill in North America by the American Feed Industry Association. Facing stiff competition, Southern States is recognized for excellence in feed manufacturing operations, safety, and quality. As a corporate, corporate partner and legacy operation in Roanoke, we want to recognize Southern States for this significant accomplishment. A little aside, 
uh, many of you probably know I grew up on a dairy farm out in Hollins. Southern states was a word that I learned probably before I learned how to say daddy. <laughs> if you ever grew up on a farm back in that day, you know that southern states had feed bags that were flowered. And the reason for that is, is because the families took those flowered feed sacks and actually made shirts and dresses for their children. And, and I'll have to admit, I was one of those who wore a feed sack for a shirt. Back in that day, you didn't have malls and you didn't, you didn't have the uh, designer clothes. Well, they did in New York, but not in Rome. So if, if you grew up on a farm, at some point in your life, you wore a feed sack. So Southern States, God bless you for the feed sacks. I've been speaking uh, a lot this morning about courage and leadership, but uh, at, this, at this time, we want to recognize a county employee who took a courageous act, a bold act, uh, and, and as a result, and right now I'd like to ask Officer Runyon, Sam, and Chairman Minnis to come up to the podium. What I, and while they're coming up, uh, back in sep on September the 25th, Sam, um, who's a seventh grader at Williamburg Middle School, was in the lunch lunchroom and, and started having trouble breathing. He was choking, in, in fact. Uh, he did motion to Officer Runyon that he was having this difficulty. Uh, Johnny responded immediately, uh, actually initiated the Heimlich maneuver, uh, struck him on the back, dislodged the, the, uh, the food. And uh, I think it's safe to say <clears throat> that um, this young man is, is healthier today than he would have been had this not happened. And it points out the, uh, and he's here, he's here because the right person was in the right place at the right time with the right training. And that's important. Uh, Ronald County Schools has 14,000 plus students. In their high school and middle school, they'll have as much as 1,200 students on any one given day. So the importance of having people who are trained to respond to emergencies, medically trained personnel in the schools is absolutely critical. It's amazing the number of issues that students have today that can turn into an emergency in a heartbeat. And we have one example of that. A very healthy young man who uh, no one would have ever expected having a problem, had a problem. But because Officer Runyon was there uh, and, and took action, I'm supposed to have something here, and I do. They just hid it from me. On behalf of the Ronald County Board of Supervisors, we want to present this certificate of recognition to Johnny Runyon for, the, for his quick action and, and his response in, in, in a life-threatening situation. So thank you for what you did, and congratulations. And Mr. Minix has something he wants to present. Officer Onion, on September the 25th at William Byrd Middle School, you took what could have been a tragic and a fatal situation, and with your skill and fast response, you turned it into a celebration of joy that we celebrate today. On behalf of the school board, uh, our superintendent, our staff, and our teachers, we give you this plaque with our deepest appreciation uh, for your service to Ronald County. stay up here because I'm going to turn the podium over to him in, in just a few minutes, but I think it's a, it's a given that Roanoke County Board of Supervisors and Roanoke County School Board has a relationship that 
most other jurisdictions envy. Uh, we not only just talk to each other, we actually work together. And the, the capital plan that, uh, that we talked about earlier, and we also have another uh, formula that we use when, we, when we're doing our budget. But that got so much attention that, uh, that, that I actually, when I was with the school board, I was with the school board down on the Board of Supervisors, but I actually was invited to Chicago for the National School Board Association's uh, conference to, to present that plan to them. And, and again, at the Virginia Association of School Boards in Williamsburg. And it's, it's, it's amazing the number of jurisdictions that don't even talk to each other. It, it's, it's, like it's, a, it, it's like they've declared war on each other or something. But here in Roanoke County, and we've had a good relationship for many, many years. And, 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 and back when I was chairman the first time, I think it was, I don't know when it was, it was a long time. Well, the first time I was chairman was 1975, which they didn't mention, but, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> the first time I was chairman during the, this, this term is when I asked the schools to make a presentation at this very same thing, because it's a critical part of, of what Roanoke County is all about, and it's our highest priority in, on the Board of Supervisors. So without any further ado, Mr. Mendix. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman Floor. And uh, let me offer my thanks, too, for the regional chamber. Gosh, it's just great. Always is. You do a dynamite job. And thanking you, thank you for making this possible. And it's my great, great pleasure as the chairman of the Roanoke County School Board uh, to report to you that in the year 2012, that the state of Roanoke County Schools is excellent. And uh, I would like to be able to share with you just a few things. Uh, we'd like to brag a little bit because uh, it will help offset some of the things I'm going to tell you later. Uh, uh, we, we staff awards. Uh, uh, we had a national blue ribbon school in our district this year. Uh, that is a very sought after honor. This is the first one ever in Reynolds County, and it was a little elementary school, Clearbrook Elementary School, out on Route 220. And uh, we had uh, in this year. Governor's Award for Ex Education Excellence. We had eight schools, most ever in, in, in our history in Reno County. Some of them were multiple winners. Back Creek Elementary, Bonsack, Clearbrook, Cave Spring, both those four-time winners. Glen Cove, Green Valley, a two-time winner. Oak Grove, Penn Forest. Uh, we had five schools that uh, earned the 212 2012 Board of Excellence, Education Excellence. We had four repeaters for District 1 title schools, Clearbrook, Green Valley, Mason's Cove, and Oak Grove. Our teachers and staff received some 25 awards. I won't go over them. We don't, obviously don't have time. I would like to mention one, the McLaughlin Award, a very prestigious sought after award that was won by one of our teachers at Penn Forest, Miss Kate Lear. Our students in 2011 had a graduation, uh, on time graduation rate after four years of 91.8%. Uh, we just received the information on 2012, and it was 91.7. That compares with the rate for the state of Virginia of 86.6%. We're 5% higher than the state of Virginia. Uh, more than 87% of our graduates, almost 88%, go on to some higher type of learning at colleges. 
We had 1,002 students who took dual enrollment courses working at both Virginia Western and at their high school and achieving credits and some uh, are almost finished with the first year at Virginia Western by the time they get out of high school. So you can see that we have a lot of reason to be proud. Uh, athletic and academics, and we, uh, am, uh, we are as important to stress academics as we are athletics. Academics is uh, what we send you to school for. Ath uh, athletics is the fun you have doing things while you're there. Now, we had uh, seven teams win state championships in either athletics or academics. And on those teams, we had 10 young men and women that won sports and academic awards, including seven state titles. So you can see that we are very proud it goes without saying that we're extremely proud of, of uh, the honors that our students, our teachers, our staff have brought to us. Now, all these things uh, are the, the good things. Uh, you know, they're the mashed potatoes I had for you. Now I'm going to have some spinach for you. Uh, uh, to really know exactly where we stand, and what all is uh, uh, available and what the true picture is, you need to have all the information you can get. I'm reminded of the guy that was standing on the stop on the corner waiting for the stoplight to change, and he had about a hundred pound pit bull standing down, sitting right beside him. Man walked up and said, Does your dog bite? And he looks over at his at that pit bull, he said, No, my dog doesn't bite. So the guy reaches down to pet him and he just about chews his arm off. And he's holding his hand. And he said, I thought you said your dog didn't bite. He says, it's not my dog. <laughs> so uh, unless you know all about the dog uh, and all about education, you never have a real picture. But I'm gonna give it to you here in just a second. Now, um, but I wanna remind you of something. For what I'm gonna tell you, I'm responsible. <laughs> not the board, not the superintendent. If you have somebody to blame, blame me, all right? But I, I would say what I'm going to share with you this morning uh, would probably be endorsed maybe by about every school district in the Commonwealth of Virginia. But I wanna point out one thing before I get into this. Uh, you saw just recently in the newspaper uh, that we had come up with a surplus of $5.3 million. And everybody said, oh, we're rich, we're rich. Well, that's not true. The surplus this year was $3.3 million. You say, Fuzzy, that's still a lot of money. Sure it is. How did we get $3.3 million? I'll tell you how we got it. We froze hiring. We cut here, we cut there, saving every single penny that we could because we know that we are faced the wolf at the door again this year. How long do you think $3.3 million will last in a $131 million budget? It will be gone before you can turn around twice. In the past four years, the Commonwealth of Virginia has cut the funds that we receive by $14 million. They have imposed rigorous state academic standards on our school without a corresponding substantial funding stream. You know, uh, uh, we just go out uh, over next to the school there. We got a big tree outside, has $100 bills on it. And we just go out and pick a basket full. I guess that's what they think. Uncle Sam gets into it too. They come with the regulated special education programs and they promise to pay 40%. Going to pay 40%. You know what they pay? You know what they paid last year? 
15 to 17 percent. Well, it's back to the cash tree again, I guess, huh? Not counting the sequestration uh, cuts that are coming in 2013, uh, this is an addition, these are, and it could cost us in Roanoke County anywhere from 300000 to $400,000. Gone. Gone. You're business people. You're business people. Ladies and gentlemen, how long do you think that your business could stand with these kind of losses, these kind of cuts? In the past year, we have closed three schools. Unless a miracle happens, we're going to close another one this year. You've probably all read it in the paper. 2014, we may have to close more. As Chairman Flora says, it's a dismal look ahead. And you know what I hate about closing a school? You just cut the heart out of a complete community. And, but we have no choice. We have no choice. Past four years, we have cut from our workforce 236 positions. And of that number, 115 of them, almost half, were teachers. Folks, it doesn't take rocket science to understand that a teacher can provide a better education for a class of 15 than she can for 25. Now, I want you to guess something. Which way do you think test scores are going to be going in the next few years? These are your children and grandchildren. Do you want them to have a better education? We have cut, we have closed down, we have combined, we have not hired. Not just us. Roanoke schools, same way. Franklin County schools, same way. Every school district in the Commonwealth faces the same thing. I say this to help you understand something, and I hope you understand this. We have nothing left to cut. You understand? Nothing left to cut. I served years ago on the Board of Supervisors with a guy named Bob Johnson. I see smiles and heads moving, many of you know him. And I heard Bob say this often, and I didn't realize how true it was going to be. Bob said this, anytime that you look east, the very most you're going to get is disappointment. How sad and how true. If I had the opportunity, never will, to speak to the governor and to each senator and to each House member, you know what I'd say? I would say to them, you must, must, absolutely must look further Look beyond the end of your nose and make education a priority in the Commonwealth of Virginia. Hello? Anybody at home? Because if you do not, I want to give you a guarantee. If the cuts came, continue to come the same way they have in the past four years, the education standards in the Commonwealth of Virginia will meet the same standards of some banana republic in Central America. That's where it's going. Each year, we cut more, we hire less, we plead, we bleg, we're floundering, we ask for a life raft, and what do they throw us? 
an anchor. And we're probably going to get another anchor this year. I would say this to every official that serves in our state and also our federal government. When you were running for office, you came, patted us on the back, arms around us. Uh, uh, you, you know, we believe in education. We support education. We're friends to education. Okay, friends, here's your chance. Let's prove it. I would suspect that a fifth grader in one of our elementary schools with the information I'm giving you can see that public education is going down the tubes in the, the Commonwealth of Virginia. And Richmond either can't see it or it is they think that other things are more important. But I'll give you my thought on it. To neglect the future of education in the Commonwealth of Virginia is like playing Russian roulette with a bullet in every single chamber. Chairman Floor, I want to thank you for inviting me here to express some strong feelings, and I guess you can see they're strong, about the state of public education in the Commonwealth. I want to thank you and your board for working hand in glove with us because we know your backs are against the wall just like ours. We are grateful that last year, at the very last minute, you were able to find enough funds to give our teachers a very small raise and our staff after about three or four years of not having one, and it's probably gonna be another three or four before they get one again. But we appreciate that. We appreciate having worked together with you in the past. And I think it's just uh, that we have to continue to work together in the future because I want you to know we cannot succeed without you. We just can't succeed without you. This and I'm done. We are blessed to have our superintendent who has worked miracles in the past four years, superintendent and staff. But I want to point out something to you, ladies and gentlemen. There are no more miracles to work. And we would ask you who are friends of education, if you have any influence in Richmond, you know any influence, you know anyone there, or you know anyone that has influence in Richmond, please go to bat for us. Help us. Help us to keep our schools what they should be. Because pure and simple, friends, we cannot survive another anchor. Thank you all. God bless you. Have a great holiday season. Well, I think I'm supposed to conclude, and I have about four pages of scripted stuff here, but I, I'm going to close the book, and what you're going to get from here on out is me. Um, many of you probably know that this is my last State of the County address, regardless. Uh, my term is up next year. I'm not seeking re-election. I'm going to... Uh, Find out what it's like to enjoy a private life again. If I live to, uh, to next August, I will celebrate my 50th year in, in local government. About 45 of those in public administration as a town manager, a city manager, and a county administrator, and, and an employee of the school as a director of uh, operations. I'll also have 16 years at the end of next year as an elected official, 
Now, 45 and 16 does add up to more than 50, but as obviously as you, you can tell, there's some overlap there. You know, there's a lot of things that I have learned uh, over the past 50 years, and one of them is that, that the public can be very kind to you most of the time. And, and I can tell you that the Hollins District has been nothing but kind to me all, every year that I serve. Um, they, are, they are the people that actually support the only reason that I really came back. They supported me. So they don't whine. They don't cry. They don't complain. They seem to just take things, you know, as they go. And, and I think it, it probably has a little bit about more to say about that it's not a transient area. Uh, most of the people who live in Hollins have lived there a long time. They've seen a lot happen, mostly good, in Roanoke County. But they have been wonderful to work with. But the time has come, and I promised myself several years ago and some other people that when this stopped being fun, it's time to give it up. Well, folks, the time has come. As a matter of fact, it stopped being fun a couple years ago. So I'm going to pass it on and let someone else uh, have some fun, because I think I've had about as much fun as I can stand. <laughs> but what I want to pass on to you is the theme today is taking risks. And taking risks means political risks as well as financial risks. We expect our businesses and industry to take risks, starting up their business and getting it going. But so many elected officials want to play it safe. They want to take the low road and not do anything. Just all they want to do is work toward getting elected next time. Well, let me tell you, there are two types of elected officials. One's the politician and one's the statesman. And I'm going to read to you something that someone else wrote that uh, it's not, these are not my words, but they're certainly, certainly they are applicable. Good leadership isn't being the loudest person in the room. It's not about being a politician. It's about being a statesman. A politician is all talk and no action, but a statesman quietly goes about his business getting things done. The decisions we're going to have to make in the next few years in this valley are going to require statesmen, not politicians. We're going to have to take a look at and our structure of government, and those of you who have been in, in government long enough know that the structure that we have was good. It's, it's been around for centuries, and it was good in colonial times. But everything has changed since the uh, 1600s and the 1700s. We're not the same. That we're not the same society. We're not an agrarian society. We are an industrialized, commercial, and urban society today. So the General Assembly is going to have to take a look at how local government is structured. It doesn't work. It clearly doesn't work. And, and there's some major changes that are going to have to take place in order to bring it into the 21st century. And I hope that if down the road that our, our legislators in Richmond can see the wisdom in taking a look at how we can better serve people by changing how we do business in local government. Now, <clears throat> taking risks is, is, is something that I have, haven't shied away from. Uh, maybe I've taken more than I should have. But as an elected official, you've got to take them. And you've got to be a person who has enough wisdom about them to look down the road and see what's good for your community. Your decision has to be not what's best for you, but what is best for your community and this valley. So I challenge every elected official that happens to be here or not here to start looking at what's really best for this community and this valley and start making decisions based on it. Now, I want to I want to end with a, a, a definition that of of a politician. A politician is a person who can make waves and make you think he's the only person that can save the ship. 
Sound familiar? Thank you for being here, and thank you for everything that you do for this valley. And I want to thank a couple, I have, there's one person who was not introduced, and I want to, to acknowledge the fact that he's here. Gary Gerald is the Hollins representative on the Planning Commission. He was invited to sit up here with us, but I think he thought that was just a little too close to the podium, so he decided to, to sit a little further away. But Gary is here, a very good friend of mine, has been for years. And I've got two fraternity brothers here, one sitting at the table with me, Paul Hinkle and Ray Ferris sitting back here. Uh, we've known each other. I guess don't, don't ask them anything about Ronald College and, and what we did back in, in, the, in the dark ages. But we just don't talk about that anymore. What happened at uh, the fraternity house stays at the fraternity house. <laughs> I think it says, says about Vegas too. But thank you for being here. Have a great day. Enjoy it. Every day is a blessing. Enjoy the Thanksgiving holiday and enjoy whatever holiday that you might celebrate between now and the end of the year. And just when you wake up in the morning, thank the good Lord that you're here and that you're enjoying life. And life is good. And life is good past the Board of Supervisors, too. Thank you.